so excited to get to be here with you today. Um, you are seriously one of the most creative people that Max and I know on this planet, so I'm so excited to pick your brain and to step into your world a little bit. Like, Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, seriously. Monica. Um, so, your craft is incredibly unique. I don't know anyone else who does this. How did you get into this world? Yeah, so I was 15, um, supposed to be homeschooled. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Wasn't into it. I love it. And so, uh, so there is this movie, this Michelle Gondry film, Science mm -hmm. of Sleep, and there are these wooly characters. And I, I saw this movie and I literally ran outside right when the credits hit. <laughs> really? Because I didn't know what to do. <laughs> and I, I kind of like went to this hibiscus tree on the side yard mm -hmm. and kind of just like hung out for a minute and like collected my thoughts and thought, I need to make wooly things. <laughs> I love it. This is like, this was the only way for me at the time to process yes. what I just saw. Cute little 15 year old Caleb. Exactly. <gasps> I gotta make Mind things life. out of wool. Wow. And that's where it started. And so these started as sort of like stop motion film characters, small full bodied mm -hmm. things. Uh -huh. And then just evolved over the span of 10 years. Where do most of your ideas come from? Because like your animals and creatures and little belt things are so cool. Walk me through your brain and your process of how you get there. Yep, so uh, my sort of take on all of these is a bit more scientific. When I was a kid, I wanted to be a biologist. Really? Me not having finished high school, <laughs> it didn't really pan out. And so this kind of like, me taking a realistic approach mm -hmm. on this animal art form is kind of my way of being a biologist. Well, that's so cool. Yeah, and I, I get to that. represent these animals as I see them. So tell me about your materials, your supplies that you use. Yeah, so this is called polyfill pillow stuffing. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people when needle felting will use just wool, mm -hmm. but I found polyfill to be lighter. So if I'm making a big one, it'll hang well. Right, it won't fall off the wall. Exactly. Uh, and less expensive, both for me mm -hmm. and for anyone who's buying a piece. So, um, do you want me to show Yeah, you? show okay. me. I okay. want to see. I don't know, like literally I've never done or seen anything like this. Okay, so just take a wad of this polyfill. Mm -hmm. Get it a bit tight, scrunched up here. And this is actually a pretty dangerous art form. Here's a, you can stab yourself? Yeah. Uh -huh. I use no more than three tiny barb needles. Uh -huh. And they're serrated needles. They're these little barbs on the end. So what does that do, the little? They, they catch the fiber mm. and pull it toward the center. Wow. And so you're essentially nodding on a tiny scale. Just making it tight. Exactly. So the more you stab, the tighter it gets. Wow. And you just stab, 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 stab. It's really not an expensive art form, mm -hmm. just very time consuming. Mm. When I started 10 years ago, it would take me three days to make what now takes me three hours. So you just keep stab, stab, stabbing, uh -huh. and then eventually, maybe an hour later, you get to here. Wow, and so, this is really cool because I can already see a little creature coming out of this. Like the nose, even kind of eyebrows. So you, how do you shape, you just kind of like slowly work and build. Like you have great vision because I would not know where to start at all. Yeah, this would, <laughs> 10 years is like, is this is what this looks like. Okay, so tell me about what this stuff is. And yep. how this is not the same, obviously. Yeah. This is a lot prettier. Yeah, so polyfill, and then this is 100% merino wool. Mm -hmm. And I actually dye this all myself. So, funnily enough, um, there are, so there are a lot of uh, processes just kind of grouped into the dyeing process. Mm -hmm. So there's something called mordanting, which is yeah. getting this wool chemically ready to absorb whatever dye you're going to be introducing. Right, so it's kind of like prepped and ready to exactly. soak it all up. Exactly. Uh -huh. Um, so I use what's called an iron mordant. Mm -hmm. So I'm kind of accelerating the rusting process of an object mm -hmm. and then kind of extracting that rust for its so cool. brownish, reddish colors. Uh -huh. So this is essentially dyed from like a rust? Exactly. So mm -hmm. cool. But in a completely safe way. Yeah. Uh -huh. That's amazing. So did you, when you started out when you're 15, were you hand dyeing stuff or how did you get into No, dyeing? so yeah, I, I found, 
to get the colors that I wanted, these just natural, beautiful, yeah. flawed colors. You see there are so many different, different shades, shades of orange. Textures. I love that. Exactly. A lot of people try to run away from that, but I really? love it. It's and what are we making? I think this is a fox. Fox. Yes. Exactly. Love it. Yep, it's actually stupidly simple. To apply. Oh, I can tell you this is not going to be <laughs> stupidly simple. I'm probably going to be like mind blown because. To apply the awesome. color, you're using the same exact needles mm -hmm. that you sculpted the form with. Yeah. How many times have you stabbed yourself? Because Countless. I'm sorry. My fingers are raw. <laughs> you're, you're used to it. Uh huh. Ah. Mm -hmm. That's so cool. So maybe it's just another hour or two of this. Mm hmm. Okay, so this looks wildly dangerous, but maybe I want to try it. <laughs> Good luck. So yeah, teach me where yeah. I won't uh, totally destroy my hand. So you're going oh, to you rip off. You did that so fast. Yeah. Already. Mm -hmm. He's already got a little stripe. Perfect. So you mm -hmm. want to do that on the other side, actually. Okay. So just rip off a strand. Like how big? Yeah, that's perfect. Yeah, it gets a bit tough. Okay. You just put it here. Mm-hmm. Lay it down, kind of spread it out thinly but kind of definitely keep an eye on where your fingers are. Like here? Mm-hmm, perfect. I can see how this could be therapeutic mm -hmm. until you stab yourself and when you're not paying attention, that would be me. Yep, and Is then it's right? a couple mm -hmm. seconds of sharp pain and then you're back into therapy. <laughs> I love it. Probably a little bit like real therapy. <laughs> when I did start needle felting, um, there weren't really that many resources on the internet, some outdated, Right. Websites made by older women <laughs> right. teaching you how to make really cute bears. <laughs> and, it, and I. So you really did start from scratch, figure it out, got your hands messy. Made a lot of it. mistakes for so many years. I love that though. And I thought this was so such wicked. an old art form, but I recently just found out this has really only been around for, since, the, since the 80s. Caleb, you not only are this incredible felter, but you're also an amazing musician. Tell me a little bit about how different aspects of yourself come out through both of these really cool art forms. Yeah, so music is just this thing. When I was 12 years old, I told myself I was gonna do forever. Mm -hmm. And at this point, I'm convinced it's true. <laughs> but it just appeals to a completely different part of the brain. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of, I get to do both every day and one kind of like takes my mind off of the other. One is completely just in this, one is just audio, one is completely visual. This is such a beautiful color. So I'm assuming this is not dyed with rust. <laughs> this has an alum mordant, whereas this had an iron mordant. Uh -huh. um, and then I soaked onion skins. What? So this is just alum and onion. And it doesn't so matter crazy. if it's white onion, yellow onion, red onion, they all give you yellow. So I use that mostly for eyes, which I'm gonna make right now. Wow. To just kind of start with black lines. Whoa, love it. So really it's not all that different from painting. I'm just constantly blending colors. Uh-huh. Like mm -hmm. a Bob Ross sort of show. Just oh, a I love needle Bob Ross. felting. But no, that would be so relaxing. You should start that. I'm sure I think everyone that's would what be this is. That's, that is what this is. So I thought maybe we could collaborate and I make something especially <laughs> adventurous for you. Yeah, an adventurous. Um, and I was thinking maybe a freckled Bonnie Kate Fox. Oh, I love it. <laughs> Which it just struck me would be a fantastic idea. I've never done anything like that. Oh. Um, so I'm just gonna add tiny white freckles to oh this fox. Oh my goodness, it's so cute. Do you wanna try adding some? Okay, yeah. I mean, show me how, I don't know how. Look how cute. As simple as taking a tiny amount of wool. You kind of roll it into a mm -hmm. ball, and then I just stick it. And then just stab it in there. All right, let's see. Perfect. Oh, so cute! <laughs> yeah. Is that good? That's great. Okay, cool. Should I do one more? Yep. So we got cute little eyes now, cute little freckles coming along, a little nose I'm sure is coming. How do you do your ears? Ears, so ears, have always taken me the longest mm -hmm. because the thinner anything is, it just means the more you have to stab it. So it takes a lot of time to get it. Exactly, it takes forever. So fast forward just a few hours, uh -huh. and this is kind of where we start to get. <gasps> Whoa! 
Uh -huh. She looks so cute. She does. That's amazing, Caleb. It's a major difference from here to here. I know, but you can tell how the bones of this, like I totally see how. Absolutely. She's headed that direction. I think all the biggest progress happens in the last hour. Wow. That's yeah. when all the personality comes, comes through. Comes together. And everyone looks completely different. So That's I, I when too. I started, I never even realized people would buy these based on their personality. Really? People would just stare. If I have maybe three foxes on a wall, mm -hmm. people would just stare and buy whichever one they relate to. That's which so is completely cool. unintentional for me. Their personalities yeah. come out on their own. So I said the ears were last, but technically <laughs> the very, very last uh -huh. part is kind of adding this cape here. I want to add texture. I so I'm going to take it. a long, thick strand of wool, yeah. fold it in half, stab it in the center. Uh-huh. And after I do that for a while, Look. so give the fox a haircut as the final touch. Grooming. Oh my goodness. Give it something coarse. Something yes. big. Wow. <laughs> That's so cool. It's scruffy. Scruffy. Yeah. She's got some cute scruff. I really like it. So we've got the sort of scruffy cut. <laughs> we have the eyes. I've added a little bit of white for a sort of reflective glare yes, as well. I love that. Ears, I've added whiskers. So nose, important. mouth, freckles. Um, to be honest, I think at this point, we can call her done. She looks great. Yeah. Perfect. I love her. I love her too. Hello, little girl. Thanks so much for tuning in. Be sure to go to Caleb's website and grab a freckled fox before they sell out. The link will be below. If you haven't already, please subscribe and go check out the other awesome videos uh, with other great makers. We can't wait to be adventurous with you. Thank, Thank you. you. We'll see you next time.